Welcome to the Performance Enhancing Podcast. It's like steroids for your brain. A podcast for people looking to live life at their peak potential. Chock full of real world tools and knowledge that you can apply in your life today. By providing you with a lens into the lives, beliefs, practices, and actions of those who are already living extraordinary lives, the Performance Enhancing Podcast will help you shift your mindset or create that change in your daily rituals and habits so you can explode with success in the areas of life that are most important to you. So get ready for another dose of Performance Enhancing Podcast with Satori Prime. Here's your host, Elon Ferdman. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another performance enhancing podcast with your host, Elon Ferdman. And today we're going into part two of my interview with Dorn Aldena. If you missed part one, we spoke about the automation of the testimonial process. So again, one of the most effective, if not the most effective marketing efforts is to get word of mouth clients, correct? Now, a lot of people are afraid to ask for people to create testimonials, how to create testimonials, follow up with them about giving them testimonials, all that kind of stuff. And Doran actually has a software that allows you to automate that entire process for your business. So definitely make sure and uh, listen to part one if you haven't already. And in this part, we're actually going to be talking about how to optimize and tweak your marketing message, your testimonials, et cetera. Uh, The process of surveying your audience, which is something that I was teaching Doran about. And he shares an example of how he did it and just got massive insights into how to then market his product. Uh, So very, very important. And then we'll obviously go into uh, Doran's final answer, which I thought was very clever and uh, let us down another little short story that I thought was quite interesting. So enjoy part two, the wrap up with Doran. And until we speak again, have an amazing, amazing day. You know, I had another client, he was sending, literally sending out requests for testimonials through the mail. And so he's paying for print, postage, the whole nine, and he was getting at best 10% response. And he even paid for postage for them to send it back. Yeah. Then he got on the testimonial engine and literally overnight, he went from 10% to 34.6% response and he didn't have to pay for postage or print. Yeah. So that's the kind of game changing, you know, impact it can have once you have a system that works. Yeah. What would you say? So I like this PSR thing. And interestingly enough, when we tell people to do testimonials for us, I've Mm -hmm. noticed a lot of times people will create a video, for example, and they just ramble. Mm -hmm. And then I have to go and edit this ramble into some sort of coherent testimonial. (laughs) Otherwise, it's just useless to me, right? I love that they did it. And I love that they took the time but they're talking for about five minutes and no one's going to sit there and listen to someone's testimonial for five minutes. So we actually give people the formula, which is exactly what you said. I've just never heard PSR, which is before I use the product, this was my problem. Mm -hmm. After I use the problem, this is the solution I found. And here's the result I was able to produce. So it's exactly the same thing. Does the software tell people how to kind of formulate their testimonials or you just kind of leave it open-ended? We kind of leave it as quick and easy and open-ended as possible so that uh, people don't get, um, shall we say, a little scared off with the tall order of how sophisticated, complex, or big the testimonial needs to be. Some people might just say it was awesome, amazing experience, just like a one or two liner. Yep. So we didn't want to scare people off by making it too much of a tall order to, to get them to do. Because ideally, what we want to do is to be able to say, it only takes like, you know, three seconds, or it only takes like three minutes. That's, pro- that's actually more accurate. It only takes like three minutes. And uh, your feedback would, ne- would mean the world to us. So that's essentially all we do to ask for reviews is just say, how did we do? Would you mind sharing your experience with us? Just click the link below. And it only takes like three, three minutes and it would mean the world to us. By the way, you just made me think, could you tie this in with iTunes to do podcast reviews? Chances are you could. They need an iTunes account to be able to submit that. Yes. Yeah, but pretty much if someone's listening to a podcast, so they would either have to have an iTunes or a Stitcher account. So what you would do is 
collect the review, just like I was talking about with a simple review capture page. And then on the thank you page, that's where you can use our stock video that asks them to copy and paste that review on an additional review site, such as iTunes, or you can create your own custom video. And I know you're the kind of guy who probably want to create your own custom video. Yeah. And uh, that way you can kind of point to the button and say, click on that iTunes button. And uh, man, it would mean the world to us to be able to get our message out to more people by getting higher rankings and a better reputation on iTunes. That would be awesome. I mean, if you could do that, then you guys could tap into a crazy market because that the ranking on iTunes is actually, no one really knows the algorithm, but it's very much driven by downloads, the amount of downloads and mm-hmm. reviews. So reviews mm-hmm. are really, really big in, for sure. in iTunes. If you guys can somehow figure out how to do that, that would be amazing. Well, that wouldn't be a problem. All it takes is getting a button uh, put on the thank you page. And we have a system when you're setting up your account where you choose what uh, review site you want to build your reputation on. And if it's not there, you just enter the, uh, enter the link in there and you add your icon for it. Just grab an icon off Google Images, put it in there and bada bing, bada boom, you're set up and people can start submitting reviews right on there. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. I know that iTunes has this, they're the worst process. I think that's why they rank the reviews so high because Mm -hmm. it's just this rigmarole that people have to go through. I remember we did this contest and it was a seven step process. To submit a review. Seven steps for people to leave a review. So probably what you want to do is do some kind of a contest or some kind of uh, a surprise gift, if you will, on the thank you page. Gets people really excited and chomping at the bit to be part of this. Not just because they love you, not just because they want to spread the word and help you spread the word, but because there's something sizzlingly exciting that you're up to that they get to be a part of and get involved with a contest or a surprise gift or something. So I can, uh, yeah, I most definitely hook you up with a complimentary account, dude, and we'll uh, we'll get you off to the races. We'll see if we can, we'll see if we can take the iTunes, iTunes world by storm. <laughs> Absolutely, most definitely, we'll make it happen. Okay, so let's talk about some uh, growing pains, and this could be either in your mortgage business or iTunes, um, iTunes, or uh, he's got Lander. iTunes on the mind now. <laughs> iTunes on the mind. <laughs> what were some hurdles that you met along the way that were either unpredictable or things that could have derailed this that you really had to work through. So both give us the, what was the issue and then how did you kind of go through that? And I'm curious for you to answer on two fronts. Also, I know mindset's a big thing for you. Mm -hmm. So how did you deal with that problem when it arose? Because I know that sometimes a problem arises People make it seem so big and huge and it makes them run the other way. And people that have really tough mindsets, they evaluate problems very differently. And then also share with us how you actually handled it. Sure. Well, since this is my new venture and it's all fresh in my mind, I'll give an example from uh, the testimonial engine because we literally just launched you know, a few, um, about seven, eight months ago. And it's all top of mind for me. The challenge we came across was getting it out there because what, what we found is that people aren't exactly getting up at three in the morning in a cold sweat and saying, I need a testimonial engine. <laughs> or I need, a, you know what I'm saying? Like people are looking for that kind of solution. They are aware of their problem that we can help solve, but they're not aware of us, our brand, or even that, they, that there's a system like that out there. Mm-hmm. So they're not searching for it. So being found on Google or Facebook based on them searching for the problem ain't going to happen or, mm. or searching for the solution ain't going to happen because they don't even realize that the solution's out there. Yeah. Uh, so what we found is we were tinkering around doing different things. Pay-per-click wasn't really working. Um, so we started to use webinars, but the webinars we were doing wasn't really working either. I was making it way too complicated. I was uh, on the wrong path trying to give way too much information. People got educated, but they didn't buy. And so what happened was my business partner actually um, bought a course from Russell Brunson. Yep. Who is the, uh, you know, he's a big name in the internet marketing and he owns ClickFunnels. And I guess my business partner bought ClickFunnels and as a bonus, he got access to this membership area and he got access to a tool called uh, the Perfect Webinar. And my business partner forwarded it to me and I went through it. I was like, dude, this is freaking off the chain. Like I couldn't believe, 
I couldn't believe how powerful this training was. He handed over the full template and make a long story short, we, I modeled his exact template pretty much slide for slide, exactly how he set up his webinar template. Mm. We went from 5% conversion on our webinar to 24%. Did you send him a testimonial? Dude, I need to do that. You're giving me, <laughs> you're giving me all kinds of action lists, aren't you? This is awesome. <laughs> You're going to have to send me, a, send me a, a, a Google Drive list of all the yeah. stuff I'm going to do. On. This is awesome. So, no, I d- haven't done that yet, but that would be sweet. I, I would you love would to love that. that. That's a yeah. great testimonial. Yeah. Literally from 5% to 24%. And the 5% one, we were selling the monthly subscription. The 24%, we were getting people to pony up the money for the entire year. Wow. So not only more, you know huge uptick in the average transaction size, but obviously you know a game changer when it comes to conversion. So what I think the big lesson there was: number one, don't give up. Number two, like we were talking about earlier, find mentors, find proven models, proven systems, and model other people who've gone before you who've gotten the result. And that's a just a perfect beaming example of how you can go from you know dud to stud in a hurry when you model someone else's system. So let me ask you this, because you've obviously, throughout all of your experiences, you've kind of always been the in the front guy, sales guy, marketing guy, et cetera. When you create a webinar, which is not easy, guys, by the way, to sit down and, and script these webinars, obviously a lot of yourself is in there. And mm-hmm. when it does not convert, what was that like? Because I know for me, if I create a VSL and it doesn't convert, like I think it should convert. There's always that piece that goes, oh, shit. you know, <laughs> all that time and energy, yeah, right? <laughs> all that time and energy. And then a little bit of that ego of, I don't really want to change it. I don't want to put all that work in again. So how did you kind of get through that little bit of a hurdle and say, you know what, I'm scrapping all of this and I'm, I'm starting from scratch? Dude, I'm so used to failing, man. I'm so used to failing forward. It's just my nature. Like, I just don't take no for an answer. You know, it's no, there's no such thing as failure. It's just a portal for new discovery, learning what doesn't work so you can reinvent and try something new. So uh, I just didn't see it. I mean, yeah, it's disappointing. It's frustrating when things don't work. Don't get me wrong. Like, you know, it's not like I get excited when something (laughs) doesn't work. But it's so knit into my DNA now that you just, I just ask myself, okay, so what's next? What's mm-hmm. next? What do I got to change? Maybe there's a tweak I just need to make. Uh, but ideally, I want to follow a proven model. And usually that's where I get myself into trouble is I'm following a proven model, but then there's something, if I'm following a proven model and it's not working, there's something disjointed. It's either the market to message match isn't there. Maybe there's some obstacles, some friction points, some constraints, some objections I'm not addressing. Maybe I haven't done a thorough analysis of the, uh, the uh, market research to find out what they really want. There's another thing you mentioned before this podcast a few days ago, last week, that it was a game changer for me because you asked me, um, have you surveyed your customer base to find out why they bought? Novel concept, right? <laughs> and I was like, no, dude, I haven't done that yet. So you got to do that. So I pulled the trigger and it was huge. You know what I found out? And I already had a sneaking suspicion, but this really confirmed it. They didn't even, 80% of them didn't even know that they needed a system like that. It wasn't even on the radar. 80%, there was only 20% that were actually looking for a solution like this. Wow. So think about that. When you know that 80% of your customers don't even know that the solution exists, they weren't looking for it. They just had the problem that was a symptom of not having the solution that kind of changes how you should be speaking to them, right? Yep, exactly. That kind of changes the marketing message. So those sort of things wouldn't happen unless you just keep peeling back the skin of the onion and asking people, friends, mentors, people like you, people that I roll with and hang with who are marketing mammoth minds and ask them mm-hmm. you know, for help and ask for guidance and get insight because in my own head, I'm not thinking about this stuff. I'm, you know, I'm myopically focusing on what's in front of me instead of looking at the bigger picture. Yeah. It's, I think that's true for anyone though. If it's your baby, you're just seeing it from your window. It's sometimes hard to take a 30,000 foot view of what it is that you're doing. Um, 
but that's awesome. I mean, that's a huge find. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it, the other thing too is I got data on what benefits they thought were most meaningful to them, why they bought. You know so what the number one on. one was? The number yes. one one was automating the collecting and sharing of customer testimonials. It's the automating part that hands down grabbed people. Just the set it and forget it automation. There you they go. don't have to think about it. Right? And here's, here's the follow-up question to that. Were you leading with those messages on the front end when you were originally selling this thing? No, but interestingly enough, the title of the webinar that converted 24% as opposed to 5%, that is the title of the webinar, how to automate the process of collecting and sharing client testimonials. There you go. Right? So dialed it right in. And I never would have known that that was the golden thread, the secret sauce, the critical game-changing uh, nugget in my marketing had I not done that survey. So thank you for cajoling me, luck. give me a kick in the ass. I needed to do that. That's awesome. I love when I say smart things and people actually go and do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, David, you know, I'm like, I get so excited when people actually do it. Absolutely. Well, you know, you say smart things often. So having someone <laughs> pull the trigger and yeah, actually guys, do it. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, by the way, I thought, because I did a, an interview with Shannon Graham uh, yep. fairly recently, and we had this conversation too, which is word of mouth marketing is the most effective marketing in the sense of your highest converted sales are going to come from someone that recommends someone to you. Mm -hmm. For example, when Frank Kern recommends someone to work in our agency, they're pre-closed. They're pre-cooked. <laughs> right? It's like pre-tenderized. They're 99% working with us. Absolutely. Why? Because A, they value Frank Kern's opinion. And if Frank, if Frank Kern says we're good enough to work with them, in their world, they're like, why would I go do all this search? He says they're great. They have to be great. Bingo. So that word of mouth, I think, is so powerful. And yet it is the most underutilized, as Shannon was saying, the most underutilized tool because people are embarrassed to ask. People don't know how to ask. And so I think also if you guys kind of led with that message of informing people, I think innately people know that, mm -hmm. but they have no idea. And I think that's where the automation part really clicks in. It's like, so it's the most powerful. I don't use it. Yes. So I know I'm, I've already admitted to myself that I'm leaving tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table and mm -hmm. then says, by the way, Joe, I can automate this for you. I'm going to be like, I'm listening. Yeah. You know, and well, you know, what's interesting, there was a survey done and they found that 79, almost 80%, 79% of consumers deem positive customer reviews as just as influential as a referral from a friend or family member. Eight out of 10 people yep. consider an online review, someone they don't even know from the hole, a hole in the wall as influential, as believable, and as influential in their buying decision as a referral from a friend or family member. That's yep. huge, dude. It's massive. That's huge. And think about it. These, these online reviews work 24-7. They don't uh, show up wait, late to work. They don't you know, make excuses or complaints. They're working 24-7 for you as an uh, advocate for your business. And how many of us use them? I mean, very yep. few of us use them. Very, very and I think the biggest reason is, number one, we don't have a system. Number two, we don't uh, see the importance of it. And I think there's a great um, depiction that speaks to the power of why we need reviews. And it's something I teach called the invisible prospect. And the invisible prospect essentially is someone, whatever category of business you're in, your customer is behind the scenes doing research. Back in the day in the dinosaur method, they had the yellow page thing. You know that, that thing, if you, if you didn't have a, a booster seat, you used it for your yep. kids, right? In the back yep. seat. Now that's dinosaur. Now it's only people 65 and older that use that. Now we got the online version, yellowpages.com or .ca. And then we've got Google, uh, we got Google research. We've got Yelp. We've got 
social media. So people are doing research behind the scenes. It doesn't, for example, my, um, I spaced out when we were going to Hawaii last, uh, in March and I was supposed to be keeping track of all my kids stuff and it was late and I forgot to look under the seat and my poor son, he, he brought his classic teddy bear, teddy bear with him and he passed out and it fell down underneath the oh seat. Oh my God. And he was so pissed at daddy because I spaced out and forgot to look under the seat. Oh my so, God. So now we're in Hawaii for a month and he doesn't have his teddy bear and he's just distraught, right? Well, here we are now in you know May and he still doesn't have a replacement. So he's been asking for, for uh, a replacement. And so he got on the internet with mom the other day and sister and they were on Amazon, of course, looking at classic teddy bears. Well, guess what my five-year-old son and my eight-year-old daughter were looking at as a, a deciding indicator as to what teddy bear to go with? Reviews. Absolutely. On Amazon. Five years old, looking at reviews, right? Wow. He wants to mitigate risk. He wants to make sure he's making the right choice. Wow. Right? He doesn't want any buyer's remorse. That's the power of reviews. And so what's happening, why I call it the invisible prospect is because your customer, your prospect is doing this online research before they ever make an email or a phone call to you or fill out a web form. And so they're invisible because they're off your radar. You don't even know they exist, but there are literally ten, hundreds, maybe even thousands of these prospects on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, depending on how much traffic you get. And this invisible prospect is doing research and guess what they're looking for? They're looking for reviews. Yep. And if you don't have these reviews, they're going elsewhere. And if you have them and you dominate with your reviews and you make your online reputation mission critical, you're getting the business. That invisible prospect now becomes visible and they make the purchase. They fill out your web form. They convert from a prospect to a customer. But I think a lot of times, business owners don't make this mission critical in their business because that invisible prospect is exactly that, invisible. So they don't yeah. realize how many thousands and tens of thousands of dollars is literally filtering through their fingers. They don't even realize it because they leave unannounced. They go to your competition unannounced. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, I'll give you guys a crazy story about that at a really, really high level. So Dun & Bradstreet is basically the company that does credit checks and credit reports on really large companies. Mm -hmm. So when a company like Home Depot, for example, in this story, wants to work with a certain wholesaler or retailer, they go to Dun & Bradstreet to pull up this person's credit score to figure out if they're credit worthy. A buddy of mine didn't really think anything of them had always gotten business and Dun & Bradstreet, they're kind of shady. Uh, I'm not giving them all of this credit. They're kind of shady. They, they've been stopped in three states and they're, they're doing some shady business. But ultimately what they told my friend was, here are the list of people that have been researching your company in the last 60 to 90 days. And it was companies like Home Depot, Lowe's, Best Buy, you know, like huge multi-billion dollar companies. And they asked them, what would it be if you just got one of these companies to work with you? How much money would that put in your pocket? And you start doing the math. Like even if you got 0.05% of their business, that mm -hmm. is mega money. You know, you're Huge. talking tens of millions of dollars. And so if Home Depot is doing that with companies, then trust me, every single person that could potentially be your customer is absolutely doing that. So, yep. Doran, tell people who I think now understand, hopefully at the end of this, that testimonials are incredibly valuable. Where can they find out more? about the testimonial engine, how do they get in touch with you if they want to set up uh, their own accounts? Sure. Again, thank you for having me, dude. It's been awesome being with you. It's been awesome Great. being a contributor. I've been listening to your podcast and it's really cool to be a contributor now instead of just receiving. So thank you. So now you're and a mega mind on the performance enhancing podcast. There you go. Yeah. I guess if you say it, it must be true, right? <laughs> if I say it, if I see it, I'm just being egotistical. When you say it, it's true. <laughs> I love it. 
So uh, you could go to mytestimonialengine.com uh, if you just want to learn more about the testimonial engine, mytestimonialengine.com. But I don't want to just stop there. I want to reward you guys for hanging with Elon and me and uh, being part of this podcast. So I put together a special page where you can get access to the ultimate testimonial toolkit. It's jam packed with some. Is this thing upside down? No, it's right. No, it's it, just, it just it looks a little weird when you. Uh, it's almost like it's in a mirror backwards, but um, it's got checklists. It's got tools and templates. Nice. Remember that that letter that I talked about, the um, magic wand letter. It's got a free download link for that. Wow. No opt ins required. Um, the opt in for this is required because I'm going to give you follow up emails to teach you what's in it and how to use it. And nice. I miss not to do that. So if you go to mytestimonialengine.com forward slash PEP, that's performance enhancing podcast. Nice. Or PEP for short. Put pep. some pep in your step. That's it. Have a pep talk. So yeah, you go to mytestimonialengine.com forward slash PEP. And we used to sell it. We just decided for Elon and his crew, we're going to give it away for free. So you can actually get it completely free. It's a $97 value. Wow. You for free, you just download it right there. Pop in your email address. You're good to go. Awful. I mean, uh, aw- <laughs> awful. I was going to say awfully generous. And then I started saying awesome. And then somewhere in the middle, it went Bleh. awfully awesome. Awfully right? awesome. <laughs> generous. We're just That's making up words today. <laughs> awesome. So, guys, I'll leave that in the resource guide. Uh, make sure you go check that out. Just grab the guide. I mean, it'll educate you on how to use testimonials properly. So, whether you use the software or not, at least you know how to maximize testimonials. So Doran, it's time for the final question, which I'm sure you know by now, but the cliche of, I wish I knew then what I know now. So what's something you wish you would have known when you were starting a business or even a few years ago? Dude, that's such a hard question. I know most of the people you've been interviewing have been confronted with how hard that question is too. So now I'm part of the club. (laughs) If I was to say one... Ah, oh, dude, it's hard. Um, there's okay. I'm I'm gonna say two if that's okay, because it's really Absolutely. hard to say one. The first one would be I would have made my success conditioning routine uh, that I do in the mornings mission critical from very early in the game from day one, where I saturate my mind with positivity. I Ooh. exercise. I do the learn and burn. I'm filling my mind with inspirational, motivational, educational content. The more I learn, the more I earn. The more I strengthen my mind while I strengthen my body, the better I feel, the more focused, the more intentional, the more purposeful, the more powerful I am to create and manifest. So I would have done that way earlier in the game. And I would have infused my mind with mentors through the spoken word yeah. and uh, and gotten more wisdom faster. You know, I can listen to it at double speed and it's like, man, I could do a three, triple speed and it just seems like I could still r- ramp up the speed and it's totally coherent. Like the mind can consume so much more information than most people think because they think it's going to be like Alvin the Chipmunks, but it's not. The mind can pick that information up, that data up, and it's totally coherent, even at double speed. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I would have been made, making more strategic investments in my own education earlier in the game. I would have asked myself, who can I learn from who's already been there, done that, got the scars to prove it, who's already got the results I want. I would have made strategic investments to shorten that learning curve so I can get to my desired outcome faster. Because man, I beat my head against the wall way too long because I was being cheap. I was being a cheap ass and I wasn't thinking about all the time and energy and drudgery I was inflicting upon myself by not making those strategic investments. I would have rather just pay interest on that money for the first 30, 60, 90 days now, now that I know what I know, than going through the painstaking hassle of doing it wrong for so long. Yeah. And the, my family had to suffer because of that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'd say learn and burn success conditioning routine earlier and strategic investments in my own education earlier. Yeah. I was actually having a conversation with Guy because I was at a weekend retreat. I actually met Joe Polish and I started a conversation with my brother to now join another mastermind. (laughs) So we just, we joined these masterminds and mentors and et cetera. And he has the 25K Genius Club. And I came home and we had an interesting conversation in the sense of we're marketers, right? So Mm -hmm. for us, 
money leaving the bank account usually leaves to market something and then we're expecting a 2x plus return on every dollar that that we own so mm-hmm. to put money out sometimes into things like masterminds or mentors or stuff like that where there's no immediate type of 2x return is always kind of going well yeah but we could just put it here and we're going to make more money and we had this very interesting conversation looking kind of at our history of mentors and I'm the first to say this every dollar I've ever spent with a mentor at minimum minimum has come back 5x minimum wow minimum like I've had mentors where I've spent money with them and it's been 10x in 6 months wow. so and that's not to say that one mentor is better than the other it's just where you are in life what you're up to in life right they're mm-hmm. all giving you wisdom so we were just talking about how interesting it is you know now we're going to part with 25k for this and I just know, I know. Oh, dude, that, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, this is like, this is a seven-figure investment. This is not oh. just from the relationships, from where we are, from what we can offer. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. I wish I felt that comfortable to spend whatever it is you're comfortable spending. It's always a little bit of a stretch. It's not like, hey, I have a hundred dollars here. You know, would you be my mentor? It's always going to be something. The first mentor, we, we begged our parents for $10,000. It wasn't right. like an easy thing to do, but they've all come back and they've all been incredible. And I couldn't agree more with what you said about having people stop, beat their head against the wall and actually partner up with people who are a little bit farther down the road than they are so that they can learn how to do things properly without all the heartache and, and annoyance of eventually you're going to pay the money anyway. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to pay on the front end or the back end. That's it. <laughs> Which way you want to do it. Give me one way or the other. You're going to pay the money. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm um, excited for you, man. I'm really excited for you. I've heard amazing things about the Genius Network. I mean, it lives up to its name. It's literally jam-packed with geniuses. So you'll, yeah. you'll be in good company and you'll, you'll be like a pee... Uh, uh, what do you call that? A pee in a pod? Anyways, you'll be... You'll fit <laughs> right <in> pod. <laughs> yeah. You'll, be, you'll fit right in there because um, I'll tell you what, you know, when you hang with eagles, you can't help but soar and you're an eagle. So you'll feel very much like, you know, you, you probably look around and be like, dude, this is freaking awesome. These people yeah. are not only extraordinarily successful in business, but they're huge thinkers. They're huge givers. They're huge influencers. They live life full on, full blown. And those are the kind of people you want to roll with. Those are the people yeah. you want to hang with. Those are the people you want to be in the energy orbit of because you can't help but feed off that energy and become more and more like the people that you're surrounding yourself with. So 100%. kudos to you, man. I'm excited 100%. for you. Thank you and, very much. And you're a prime example of what we should all be doing. You know, it's making strategic, strategic investments in the people we hang with and the influence that we uh, surround ourselves with. So it, it's... To me, if someone asked me that question, that, you know, that would be one of my responses. The other one is similar to your first one is I would have become passionate about learning much earlier on. I, I didn't seek out information about marketing or selling or business or any of that stuff till we really started Story Prime. And I was running a, a fund that had a hundred million dollars in assets under management. And I barely did anything, right? I just kind of sat on my laurels. I was like, I'm good at this. I didn't push my education. And now I look at how much I'm learning and I I just think I could have done 5X what we were doing in that company if I actually just gave a shit enough to go and push myself to learn new things. So, But you hadn't found your calling there, man. You hadn't locked in on your your genius to serve others. So here you are now. Satori Prime is your access point. That's it. That's it. So Doran, thank you so, so much for coming here and sharing your wisdom. Thank you also for the awfully, awesomely, uh, generous (laughs) offer you made to everyone. Guys, uh, make sure you go check that out and uh, look forward to hanging uh, hanging out with you very, very soon, my man. Hey, likewise. Thanks again for having me, bro. Always great to hang with you. Cheers. Bye-bye. 
Thank you for joining us on this week's Performance Enhancing Podcast. We've taken this pep talk and created a custom action guide so you know exactly what action steps to take now to grow your business. Just head over to satoriprime.com slash podcast and download it for free. Also, please leave a comment and rate this podcast on iTunes. It'll help us get the word out. Thanks for listening. Now, go and implement. We'll see you next time. Did you run through doors till you hit the floor? Did you read my